Hey, uh, welcome back to the 3n plus 1 conjecture. We're looking at what happens when we send a number m through a bunch of 3n plus 1 over 2 operations, x of them, followed by a bunch of divide by 2 operations, k minus x of them. And we're interested in values of m that loop back on themselves. For example, with 3 up moves and 2 down, down moves, there's a loop when m equals 19 over 5. In this episode, let's assume m is an integer and ask what kind of integer would it have to be? And let's start by looking at what happens to m when we send it through, say, these five operations. So let's see. We start with m. We make it 3m plus 1 over 2. And then we triple that and add 1, divide by 2. And then we triple that and add 1, divide by 2. Now we got the value here, which we cut in half and then cut in half again. So that's a nasty formula. But with some work, we can simplify it down to just 27 30 seconds m plus 19 30 seconds. Uh, and then we can set m to 27 over 32 m plus 19 over 32 and solve for m, which gives us 19 over 5, which is the bottom value for the circuit with three up moves and two down moves. How about in general? Then we get m equals, you can see, a 3 to the x over uh, 2 to the k m plus something over 2 to the k. In this case, that something is 2 squared plus 2 times 3 plus 3 squared. And in general, it's this kind of nasty sum. But amazingly, uh, this sum further simplifies to 3 to the x minus 2 to the x. For example, here's 2 squared, here's 2 times 3, and here's 3 squared. Let's see, if we put those together, we've got 3 cubed minus 2 cubed. Either way, it's 19 blocks. And then if we solve for m, the bottom of the circuit is m equals 3 to the x minus 2 to the x over 2 to the k minus 3 to the x. Now, assume that m is an integer. Let's ask, what kind of integer would it be? So let's put this over here and then group the powers of 3 on the left and group the powers of 2 on the right, getting this. Then let's take out the 2 to the x from the right-hand side. Okay, now let's look. On the right-hand side, we've got an even number, 2 to the x, times an odd number, so the whole right-hand side is even. And on the left side, we've got an odd number, 3 to the x, times something, m plus 1. So for the left side to also be even, m plus 1 has to be even, because otherwise we'd have an odd times an odd, which would be odd. So if m plus 1 has to be even, that tells us m has to be odd, which is pretty funny because we already knew that. I mean, if m is the bottom of a circuit loop, the first thing we want to do is multiply it by 3 and add 1, and we only do that to odd numbers. But it's sort of satisfying to see it in the formula. Okay, what else can we conclude about m? Well, the right-hand side has a bunch of factors of 2, x of them. So the left-hand side also needs those factors of 2, and it looks like m plus 1 is going to have to provide them because it's buddy 3 to the x isn't going to. So m plus 1 has to be 2 to the x times some value y, uh, which might be 1. So m equals 2 to the x times y minus 1. Uh, first of all, we can see that even the lowest member of a circuit m has to be huge. So if a circuit starts with a thousand up moves, then m is at least 2 to the thousandth, which is a big number with about 300 digits. And since all the other loops gyrate in, around inside the circuit loop, then every loop with a thousand up moves <clears throat> and a certain number of down moves is going to have members that are all huge. Uh, second of all, m has a particular form, basically 2 to the x minus 1. So 2 to the x are numbers like 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And these are not just even numbers, they're really even numbers. So if you take one and you cut it in half, you still get an even number, and if you cut that in half, you get an even number until you get to 1. Numbers like m equals 2 to the x minus 1, on the other hand, are not just odd, they're really odd. These are numbers like 7, 15, 31, 63. For example, when you put 31 through 3 to the n plus 1 over 2, you get another odd number, and when you put that through the same operation, you get another odd number. That's why this painting starts with 31. It jumps right away up to some huge number and takes a while for it to get back down to 1. Okay, and this makes total sense because m has got to keep shooting up 
in a circuit through a series of odd numbers before it reaches the top, at which point it needs to hit a really even number that will take it all the way back down again to m. Now the form of m is really 2 to the x times y minus 1, not just 2 to the x minus 1. But this does restrict m to a certain class of integers, and it does say that m would have to be really huge. Okay, so we related these formulas to the real world of circuit loops, and we discovered a little bit about what loop members must look like, if they exist. Okay, see you next time.